Hello, my name is Rachel and I will be opposing the resolution that prison should be abolished. First, I would like to note that proposition fails to present any clear definition as to what constitutes a prison. Whether the case may be that such prisons are state, federal, or privatized, it's essential to conclude that such institutions of confinement serve to punish those convicted of crime. They serve to deter society from becoming a state of chaos. Without the threat of prisons, what goes to say that people wouldn't walk around town stealing things from stores, murdering people they dislike? Let's be honest, not all people make morally sound decisions, and for those who lack a sense of moral obligation towards society, is the extended period of confinement that creates the fear that prevents such people from committing said crimes. So, if you suggest that we simply do away with prisons, what would be the alternative form of punishment? And I assume there must be some alternative form of punishment, because a world without consequences for wrongful actions would be one chaotic free-for-all. I've briefly mentioned why prisons need to exist in order to keep society in order. I will now present numerous reasons as to why abolishing prisons would in fact be a terrible idea. Prisons provide many benefits for both society and individuals alike. Such benefits include the removal of criminals from communities, justice for those with whom crimes have been committed against, and economic benefits that result from prison employment. In addition, these facilities provide shelter, food, and the opportunity of education to those who otherwise may not receive such liberties. To deny criminals of such opportunities would be unjust and immoral, and would prevent them the opportunity to advance in society through numerous positive advantages associated with such experience. Not only is the prison system bettering life for those on the outside of the combined environment, it also punishes criminals in a way that will allow a greater chance to turn their life around once they are released back into society. Among the many benefits I noted, I will further discuss the success of prison education systems. A study of Missouri's prisoners states that reincarnation rates were nearly cut in half for former inmates with a full-time job compared to similar inmates who are unemployed. By cutting the reincarnation rate in half, $2.7 billion per year could be saved. Former inmates with jobs also have less need for public assistance and contribute to society in the form of taxes and purchasing power. Not only are individual inmates benefiting, but the economy as a whole is benefiting as well. Prisons also serve to provide communities with the security of taking criminals off the streets. I don't know about you, but I would not be able to sleep at night knowing that my neighbor committed murder and yet still is able to live in his home right next door to me. I will now argue why I should vote against the proposition on the basis that the arguments made are contradictory to one another. The proposition mentions the three-strike law and states that it enters more people into the prison system for longer periods of time. The proposition then states later on in the round that abolishing prisons would inherently cause poverty rates to fall. This information is contradictory because what the proposition fails to mention is that the three-strike law will save hundreds of millions of taxpayer dollars every year for at least 10 years because the state will not finance housing and long-term health care for low-risk inmates serving life for minor crimes. Therefore, the law passed would be able to decrease poverty rates, and such a law is only effective if prisons are kept intact, not abolished. Not to mention, the same law will cause California's prison overcrowding problems to ease, and that is something the proposition also argued for earlier in the round. On the idea of overcrowding and the violation of the Eighth Amendment that the proposition proposed, I will now prove why such violations do not exist and thus prisons are not in fact unconstitutional. To show an Eighth Amendment violation, a two-part test must be met. The first part being that the action or condition must be objectively serious, and the second being that prison officials must be deliberately indifferent to the harm caused by the action or condition. As was established in the case of Madrid v. Gomez, the court found that the Eighth Amendment simply does not guarantee that inmates will not suffer some psychological effects from incarceration or segregation. In fact, in 2003, the U.S. Supreme Court held a 5-4 to four majority that such sentences under the Three Strikes Law do not violate the Eighth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. Thus, to say that prisons are unconstitutional as a result of violation of the Eighth Amendment would be incorrect. I'll now address the claim that funding is not being spent on rehabilitation programs. According to the Federal Bureau of Prisons, every federal prison offers numerous locally developed programs for inmates. Over the past two years, the department has made considerable progress in the number and quality of programs and interventions on offer. Furthermore, an attack on the funding used for rehabilitation programs is inadequate, to the warrant that such cuts are preventing inmates from successfully assimilating once they are released. When prisoners are released, they usually go back to the same friends and surroundings. If you want to increase success rates of prisoners once they are released, you would have to change where they are released to, not just the time spent behind bars. The proposition also mentioned the lobbying of political officials to pass certain laws. This is reflective of a problem not within the prisons themselves, but rather within the judicial system. Thus, I propose to run a judicial reform rather than abolishing prisons. Abolishing prisons would only harm society as it would lead to higher crime rates as a result of decreased severity of consequences. 
That is, if there are any alternative consequences imposed by the proposition at all.